Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining Darien Library this Thursday morning with Jamie from the Gardner Center. Jamie is going to teach us how to make a hand-tied bouquet today. I would like to mention that programs at Darien Library are made possible by our annual Friends of the Library campaign. We thank you for your support to make programs like this, as well as our collections available to the community. Please welcome back the talented Jamie. <laughs> Hi everybody. Um, I hope you're cozied up with a cup of tea like Amanda was saying. It's kind of a gloomy day. I think the weekend's supposed to be nice, but um, it's a nice day to sit inside and watch the world end though, I suppose. <laughs> um, so we've if you've joined any of the demos, you know, with me before, we've done arrangements for the most part. So I thought it might be fun. Amanda and I were talking, you know, let's do something a little different, a hand type okay. And she even, you know, mentioned too, it's a nice time to, you know, bring your new your kids' new teachers a nice little bouquet. They're getting ready for another somewhat challenging year, I think, with everything we have going on in the year. So that's a nice idea. But um, Elizabeth and I were talking too that September is like a huge wedding yeah. month now for us here. I think I we do more weddings in September, October um, in this area than the spring by far now. Cause I think people figured out that it's much better weather around here in the, in the fall. Mm -hmm. September is the best, you know, Hurricane Ida withstanding. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna show you a couple techniques for making a hand tied bouquet. It's really about the, how you hold and placement. So I'm gonna make a couple, one that's gonna be um, more like a paved look, which, you know, it, it really sort of dome shaped tight, almost like a bridal bouquet, like a traditional pave bridal bouquet. And then I'll make one that I would call more like a florist bouquet. So if you were to walk into the garden center and say, I need a bouquet for a friend, it's, it's a little bit of a different process. Mm -hmm. And I'll make that and we'll talk and Elizabeth will ask any questions. And then we'll sort of just, um, you know, take that one apart and then we'll have Elizabeth make it and I can watch and help. So um, I, and, and I did this sort of on purpose. I thought it would be interesting to talk about this a little bit, but there's a huge floral, instead of bringing a ton of floral flowers and we're all working with all of it and cutting them shorter <clears throat> for this, um, there's a big uh, flower shortage going on in, globally right now. Um, and it's for several reasons and COVID is one of them, but it's not the, the main reason, interestingly. so. You know, last year, so many people, weddings and events, they had to postpone them and they're doing them now. Um, and other people that were just planning to do them now as well. Yeah, so the demand is extra high. Um, so florists are doing more events than they normally would. So that puts a huge stress on the, the growers, mm -hmm. the farms throughout the world. They're trying to produce as much as they can, but um, the demand is more than they can produce at this point. I mean, we're looking at between a 30 and 40% shortage of the availability of cut flowers in general right now, which is tough. It's tough for a florist, it's tough for a wholesaler because you know I've met with my brides months ago and this is all sort of like domino affecting as we were saying and it's coming kind of to a head now. So. If you are planning an event, that's something, you yeah. know, just to be, just to know that if you are planning an event, you know, it, you know, it's getting super specific right now might be a little difficult. I mean, we, my wholesalers are great. We do our best. They do their best and I'm able to procure product, but, um, you know, if you're very specific on a certain flower, you might have to alternate, you know, to something that's similar so that it gives them similar look and feel. But that's one issue, the demand. Another issue, there's a big shortage in roses. Roses are typically, for the most part, in floral industry grown in Ecuador and other countries in South America. Um, they've had an unseasonably cold and wet and cloudy season that they just normally don't have. So mm -hmm. they're having trouble producing in the way that they normally would. So that's another issue. And then, of course, COVID does play in the floral industry as a global shipping industry yes most things are flown in but then it's just been tough to get manpower and people truck drivers well, we have a national truck driver shortage it's not, not not just specifically to flowers too but um 
So it's just, it's a little bit of a balancing act right now. So I thought let's conserve a little bit and we'll, we'll use the same flowers twice. Yeah, um, great. And then that's, you know, that's kind of an interesting thing. You don't, you know, the way in which every little piece gets affected, oh, um, even in something just like the floral industry. So, and okay. And you were saying that the hurricane also played. Oh my gosh. Yes. And right? for even local, I mean, look at the damage the town sustained. It's, it's heartbreaking. Um, but the local farmers here too, damage to full crops. Um, I have a wholesaler that is based out of New Jersey that delivers up and down the Eastern seaboard every day. They deliver from like Boston all the way down to Delaware and South. And they were hit really hard by the hurricane yeah. um, with the tornadoes in New Jersey. So, you know, they're just regrouping from a singular weather event already being stressed <laughs> and trying to find their supplies. So. Um, it's been an interesting time and we'll all get through it. We always do, but, but I thought let's conserve a little bit and reuse. So first I've got a bunch of white roses here today. These, yes, they're one of my favorite whites. They're very um, large head. Um, so they're called Mondial. This also comes in a, it's called pink Mondial. It's a very pale pink, but these have a slight little green tinge to them, but they open up beautifully. So <clears throat> the trick to um, doing a pave style, so we're gonna do a single, it's easy to see this with a single variety flower it's instead of a combination of things, <clears throat> but I always say use your non-dominant hand to hold. So I'm a righty, so I'm gonna hold the flowers in my left hand. Um, you know, most of the leaves have been stripped off already when we process the flowers, but you wanna, you know, any excess, excess leaves, you wanna lay all your flowers out and get those cleaned up first. That's really gonna help because when you're sort of holding your hand in a way that you're not maybe used to, um, it's much harder to use, you know, one hand and try to peel them off as you go. So for a really tight combination like this, just get all your stems cleaned up. You lay them out. Now are these also from Ecuador and South America? These are grown. Yep. And there's so many farms down there. They just have um, the right growing conditions. Right. And unfortunately, their weather patterns have changed a little bit lately, so. All right, so, like I said, holding starting in your non-dominant hand, and then you can use your dominant hand to place. But what we're gonna do, if you've heard of this before, we're gonna create a spiral. And if it's done right, essentially you can cut the stems and the bouquet will stand up on its own. <laughs> really? <laughs> the stem, and it, 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 I think the reason for that is that you know, when you tie, tie it off, you don't want to have stems coming in in a bunch of different directions because you can crush the stem mm -hmm. and, you know, cause a, a head to go missing, which we don't want to do. Um, so what you do is you kind of start and you're going to, you're going to lay your stems and turn your hand as you go, always in the same direction. There we go. There's a front. So, okay. You got that. So I'm, I'll, I'll just start going and you'll get the idea, but so you start with the ones, these are going to be the ones in the center. Okay. Right, so we're gonna create a rounded, really pavéed look. Um, so I cross this stem over going this direction away from me. And you're just gonna continue to turn. So if you're, if you're creating a dome, the next flowers you're gonna wanna go place the head of the flower slightly lower than the ones in the middle. And this hand that you're holding, it's a, it's a balance too, because you, you don't wanna too tight because okay. they're not gonna splay out at the bottom like they want to. So you gotta have sort of a loose grip. And you wanna hold up towards the head of the flower. Yeah, because if you hold down here, yes, hold, hold, hold up here. But like I said too, you gotta be not too tight because you can snap a head. But so it's a little bit of a finding your your right grip. But every flower that you add, go the stem goes in the direction away from you. So you know, and you just keep turning, turning this towards you this way and your stem's going out this way. So um, all of them, and they start to make that natural splay, but when we're done, you'll see that it's a nice spiral. So you can adjust and, you know, 
point things down a little bit, you know, push them down a little bit. If you feel like your center's getting a little cattywampus there. <laughs> one of my favorite words. That's um, one of my favorite words. Too. <laughs> um, does it matter which flower you make the center if they're all the same? Like, yeah, especially if one they're all the same. Thing? No, not not so much. It doesn't. They all kind of, you know, as the rose is open too, they they all end up sort of melding together with a really poppy look like this. So as you see, I just keep turning and adding, oh, I'm sorry, I bumped you there with the pen. And those, you know, I'm, it's always that same angle. So you're, you know, you're spinning to fill in that space. And like I said, as, you, as you're creating that dome, so every flower you add, it's a little bit lower. Keep spinning. Here we can nestle it in like some some of that negative space if you've got one that needs to be a little up 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 higher. <clears throat> Put that in there, and you can kind of you can keep going, but just always make sure that one that stem is going the other direction. How long will the bouquet last? You know. Um, if it's a if it's a bridal bouquet like this and it's not going in water, you no, know, just for just for that day. But it does help that the flowers are all tucked right next to each other because that kind of so they support each other. <laughs> they support each other that way, um, so it keeps them from you know right. drooping. I would say. Okay. But so that's that it's a simple technique, but it's just the more you turn and then you're going to want to tie off. I'm, you know, why, why don't we have you do the same with this one too? Okay. And so, you know, I use, you can use whatever you like to tie them off. Sometimes it's rubber band because then I'm fully wrapping the stems with a nice built ribbon of some, of some kind. Um, but you want to tie it off up at the top and you'll see, see how they all splay out and we can cut this when Elizabeth is done with hers. And we can set it. We we'll, we can set it on the table, and it should sort of stand up. <laughs> All right. Can I get a close up of that? Yeah. You know, the white's kind of hard, but so it's just creating that dome, but with that spiral effect. It's a beautiful. It's a yep, a fluffy cloud is a good <laughs> is a good way to say. It. So that's the that's the tip with that. You know. All right. So we're gonna lay all these out. Are you ready or lefty? I'm already as well. Okay. Okay, so I'm holding in this hand. Yes. Okay. Now this is going to look less suddenly less <laughs> effortless, but pretty no. easily. Okay. Do yeah. I, so I want to start like that way. So or that hold way? it out that way. I think that's that way. easier. Okay. Yep. And you grab your other stem. And, and I want to front. Cross. So you want to front. keep keep all your stems going in that direction. In that direction. Okay. And, and then so I you'll turn. twist your bouquet the other way. Yeah, towards this you. Way. Yep. Towards me. So then you're next. Okay. And then like that. So so put that back, put that guy back over this way. I know it's hard to explain. Yeah. So so you want to cross over the one you just placed. Oh, so I, I think that maybe is the way one. to yeah. And then I can so turn then turn this way. This way. Yep. So turning towards, towards you, me. but you're gonna want to put one in all of those like negative spaces. So so turn that. So let's put way. one here. That's so you want to cross over the stem that you have placed. placed. Yep. Okay. And you can twist this towards, towards you this me. way. All right. Yep. This way. And then there's a negative spot here. Okay. So you know you put it yep. down there like that. Yep. You can tuck it in a little, just like that. Just and then a little bit more towards, towards you. you. Just like one quarter turn kind of. Yeah. And so that you're gonna place in between all these little spaces. Okay. And this one is gonna go. Just like that. Yep. Yep. All right. That's perfect. And then I'm turning it towards yep. me. Yep. There. Maybe oh, right tuck here. in there. Yep. And make sure you're going over all over those all stems. stems. Yep. Like that, right? Does this is this translating on screen? Yeah. I hope. Yeah. yeah it's, perfect. It's, it's starting. That's perfect. So you'll want to put one right here. here. There's some negative space there. And like a little bit lower. A little right? bit lower, yeah. Not a ton lower though, because you right. don't want to make a big hole. Right, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
you're doing you great. Turn that, you yep, turn so it to then your you're doing great. Yeah. You know, keep the one, you put it close to your body yeah. as you go, or the one that you're placing. Um, oh. and then, I wonder if they can see this. So there's a hole here. Yeah. Which is essentially what I'm filling in, right? Mm -hmm. I'm filling this hole. You're filling it in and just making sure you're placing your stem always at the same direction and oh. over the stem that you have already lower. placed. Okay. Yeah. And so at this point, you know, you can nestle that one in a little. Yeah, just a little. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody see that? You can nestle this guy in a little just to make them tight. And you'll see how they they sort of find their space. You know, if there's a big hole, you can right. tuck, you can squeeze that guy in and you can squeeze that guy up. Yeah. Okay. And so you'll keep keep going. Yeah. Now, see, this is the difference between taming me because I didn't even notice that there was a hole. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's coming to get well. It's, oh, beautiful. it's muscle memory too. It's how your hands, I mean, I'm I've done this for 25 years, so it's you're I'm used to the grip, but you're doing good with the grip. You you know, nothing looks like it's been squeezed too tightly. Yep, perfect. And you know, just the very next little little hole. Yeah. Next little space. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. And you can maybe tuck that one right up in there in that space. And here's where you might want to readjust your grip. So okay. push this down a little. So push that guy in a little. And this guy in a little. Just, you know, if your grip, that's perfect grip because you have the give to tuck a little bit. Yep. Yeah, so that you're keeping your hand right up under. <clears throat> this is our next. Yep. Perfect. Yep. And there you go. I think you just need a couple over on this side. Yep. Mm -hmm. Space right there. And I did this one too, right? So yeah, there's a little empty space right there. Make sure there you're go. putting oh, over. Oh, oh, uh -huh. There we go. So there you go. Perfect. Oh, like... Perfect, perfect. Yeah. And it's, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> she did great. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll show you how I would tie this off. Um, I like to use um, a little pipe cleaner, you know? Okay. It's nice and soft. You know, it doesn't, the wire doesn't cut because it's got that shooting all around the, around the stem. So I've got one here. Talk to me. Get everything kind of like on the levels that you want. And so that's, you know, that traditional pave, like a bridal bouquet. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the look that, you know, oftentimes like if we'll get sent an order from overseas, um, Germany, I got one the other day from, from Germany. This is how they like to send flowers, a really tight pave bouquet, that's their style. So they want you to almost in a sense, make like a bridal bouquet and that's the way they like to gift, gift flowers. Yeah. And then when you get it at home, you'll cut the stems to the size that your vase is. You can do something a little taller or even like really low. You can cut them super low and put them in a cylinder or a cube. Um, so, so it's essentially going to be tied at the top and tied down by where you thought. I'll show you. Not okay. tied down at the bottom, but I mean, if it, if you are wrapping fully mm -hmm. with ribbon, you know, it does then tighten them down like this. But just to tie this off, I've got a, a pipe cleaner here. You're just going to go right, right up under as close to the flowers as you as you can, mm -hmm. tightly. And you can twist, twist it, it off. Yep, yeah. twist it tight. So, see how we have this nice spiral splay where pretty much everything's going that direction. If you then say we're going to cut it for maybe like bridal size, that's maybe a little bit longer than for a short vase. But I was going to put this in a short vase, I cut it super short, and you can just plop it right in. And in this instance, you know, you don't necessarily need to use that taped grid method that we've mm -hmm. done with arrangements. Yeah. I do like to do that in the florist just because when we're transporting them as gifts, there, this would kind of, it could tend to slosh out. 
of the vase. But if you're just doing this at home, this is a great way to make a low and lush arrangement too, by doing a hand tied bouquet and then cutting it short and just dropping it in a low vase. But if we were doing a bridal bouquet, I might cut this kind of right across here. And then you cut them all at the same length, so I put a clunky noise. I've got them all the same length. Technically, it should sort of stand up on its own, and that you note know, that's your indication that you've done your mechanics right away. So I make this tighter. I'm the one who did this one, so if it doesn't work, it's my fault. But it should, yeah, I just didn't tie it tight enough. That's the issue. I tie it tighter. You know, and if it's a bridal bouquet, you can squeeze the stems together like this and get a real nice tight wrap. Of ribbon on it. I was wondering if you pull it together and it doesn't push them apart at the top. It does in a sense, but you know, we're close. Mm -hmm. yeah, this yeah. displays out enough. Yeah, look. Ta -da! Ta -da! Ta -da! <laughs> yes, that's your indication that your mechanics are so right. So this is great. Um, so that's that pave look. And now we're going to do what I call like a florist bouquet. So that's more of a mixed bouquet. Um, we can set this. Oh, it's kind of washed out, but you can look at that while we do this. <laughs> or you can stand it up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so when it comes to, and this, this you can do if you're foraging in your yard too, or if you've picked up some flowers with us or um, combination of some of your own flowers and, and us or whatever, any store that you pop in. In this case, I like to start with a base of greens because it acts like a little bit of a support. And it's, you know, greens are always nice to have surrounding the base. So I have some of my lemon leaf here. Um, you know what I'm going to do first though? I'm going to lay all my flowers. This is the same as that. It's best to lay all your flowers off that you're going to use and really make sure the stems are nice and clean. These are, these are clean. I have, we're going to do sort of like leaning into fall color palette here. So I have these beautiful cremone, they're little mums that come in. Such, they look like mums. Yeah, they're just big fat guys. So like the, the bumblebees of <laughs> the family, the mums. Um, I have some dusty Miller here, but see how, like, see how it's coming. It's all straggly and, you know, there's all these stems. If you're doing a bouquet, you want to kind of, and I can, you know, then use these short pieces, maybe in a low arrangement or something, but you want to give yourself, you know, clean it up a little bit so that you're placing only like a smattering in as you go. So another. Dusty Miller here. So, yes, it's like a similar to lamb's ear, you know how it has mm -hmm. that soft, a funny smell, but <laughs> so there, and, and like I said, I will always save, you know, these and use in a low, a low arrangement. Mm -hmm. um, I always talk about how it's nice to have a little texture when you're working. So when you're thinking of your combination of flowers, um, it's nice to, you know, think your overall color palette, but it's also consider different shapes of flowers. So like, you know, these guys are really round. The Dusty Miller has a totally different shape. When you're talking fillers too, this is the Calcinia, which is in the Heather family. So, but it has such really pretty texture to it. I like that it's green in the stems. Are I know, oh, right? Amazing. Some of these they can, I think they color enhance a little bit, but okay. um, but calcinia generally, I think, comes in sort of more of a white. But there are certain things that I really can't stand that are color enhanced, but that calcinia looks nice. Oh. Yeah. So I'm just kind of, you know, taking off the messy lower laterals, as I call them, mm -hmm. the branches that come up lower. So that'll just make it easier for you to put it all together when you're holding in your hand. Let's see what else we have. Seasonally, I brought us some some kale, some brassics in the brassica family, which is like your broccolis and your kales and cabbages. Did you eat them? 
you know, I wouldn't because it's probably grown on a farm that <laughs> is that. using all kinds of pesticides because it's grown for the floral industry, but yeah. Um, but it's the same type of thing. Um, I have some lovely roses here that we'll pull out. Just that soft. Yeah, yeah. And they're pretty much peeled and ready and set to go. So it's really helpful to lay your stem out for you so that you can grab the shell. This is some leucodendron. Ooh. And it's it's nice to you know grab some flowers that are long and linear like this, as well as ones that are just round. And there's different shapes to the blooms too. You know, if you think about a lily, a lily is sort of a star shape. That's always nice to just consider bringing in different shapes with mm -hmm. what you're using. Um, I love this color combination. Yeah, it's like a softball, right? Right. So like yellow and orange. But yeah, like a romantic I'm, fall. It is a like romantic fall, <laughs> leading into autumn. fall. Well, autumn, we'll say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of yellow and orange ever. So right. my yeah, before. my yeah. fall arrangements tend to be you know more of the way it kind of really looks outside. Right. You know, like birds, the yeah. browns. And yeah. So I've got some really gorgeous dahlias, which are in season this time of year, late late summer, early fall. Um, so yeah, I'm just peeling off the little buds, the little laterals, just so that they're not making a mess in your hands. Again, with the texture, so here's some hypericum berry. This is pretty, it's in like, it's not that bright red, it's that sort of brownish red, so I thought that would look nice Absolutely. with these soft tones. Um, a little peach stock. And you know, we've already processed these. These do come into us with leaves all the way down here, but I've stripped them mostly because they were in the display cooler. But um, stock has such a pretty scent. If you can kind of smell it through your mouth. Um, and then just a little bit of an opposite color tone. I, I have some some blue, some light blue delphinium, and that. I know it kind of looks like the same color as the table, but mm -hmm. you'll see it, it you know, but it's it just, it does. It's a little bit unexpected, but that's always fun in life and in flowers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I have some other greens and things here that we can pull. I have a little bit of eucalyptus that we can use. So let's throw these in. And then it's just all about grabbing as you go. See how this stem right here has, yeah, it's got this nice split where I could maybe, if I if I break it off here, I can use two pieces. So now I've got two pieces that are similar height. So that's always something you can do. That's the eucalyptus. Again, here with the, you can use your clippers too, but um, with this seeded uke, I'm gonna cut it right here at this joint. Now I've got two pieces to, to work with, okay? A little. All right, so let's get building. Now we've got everybody laid out. Um, I tend to start with a little bit of greenery. You don't have to go too crazy and you don't have to worry so much about what direction the stems are going so much in this case. Um, it's kind of like a little cage in a way to hold up, hold up your stems. Okay. So, you know, just kind of placing so that it has that little bit of flayed, like that's a nice curve to it. So I'm gonna stick that on one end. And again, you're holding your 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 grip right under the base of the the flowers or the leaves. Is it the same sort of turn in and fill oh, the base? Kind of a little bit, but in this case you can I don't know what was that Ghostbusters where they're like don't cross the stream. Yeah. <laughs> in this case Cross, that's fine. <laughs> okay. I think that's what saved New York in the end is when they did cross them. So. <laughs> so, um, so here's a little bit of a, you know, a base here. I oftentimes too, if there's really long stems that are poking me, I'll just go ahead and cut them down a little bit as I go. So it's just a loose gathering of some greenery. So 
you know, and again, this is like something that we would gift wrap up through the tissue and the ribbon mm -hmm. and you get to someone. And then it's nice in the sense that it's hand tied and really it's sort of designed and placed in the sense that they can just take it home, cut the stems and flip it in a vase. Um, so here we go. I, and there's no really right or wrong way to order it, I don't think, but I tend to start with like the longer laterals first. And it, yeah, that was I my put question. them right in. Okay. Yeah. So, and as we go and we go around, you'll see me doing that same sort of technique that we did with the roses. Mm -hmm. But you can place, and I like to work in triangles. So I'm going to try to do kind of like, and threes are good, but I need the numbers. So, and as you go, loose grip on your flowers, but you can twist this stem that you're placing, twist as you go. That helps it get in there gently and, you know, stick to do the same variety all at once. So for the most part, I think that just helps. So I'm just twisting and sliding in and you'll see I'm making a sort of a triangle here with these guys. Then you can take another, I, I, I still, I kind of stick to like the long lateral pieces first. And in a, in a bouquet like this, you know, you don't want everything all the same height. You want some interest from the, the it's good for the eye for that depth. Um, it's not a bridal bouquet, so we're just, so I'll pop that guy sort of in the center there. And then you can, you can do like triangles and lines, I always say. So here's okay. a triangle, but then here's a space over here for this this other piece of stock and we'll do kind of a kind of a line with the stock so and you will organically feel where you think it looks good and that's all good all good things um i have these two large so if you've got two you know some vocal flowers like this that are big you know you want to maybe get those in too because they have a thicker stem they'll be easier to get in now so you can put one in and maybe, you know, just slightly lower than the one, you know, I mean, this is gonna be kind of the back that I'm working with from my point of view. So if I, if I slip this guy in, you know, sort of lower, we've got friends looking to go there. <laughs> um, so why don't we put in some of these knobs? And again, it's just a loose grip with your hand here and Twist, twist as you put it in, and twist if you if you put it in a spot that you don't um, like where it where, where it went. Just when you're pulling it out, just gently twist it out too. And that's what you can do. Yep, that will help it come out <clears throat> easier. Did you ever have brides who want bouquets like this instead of? The there definitely usual? are, and there the mechanics for a looser, more wild bridal bouquet are pretty. They're it's a little different. Okay. And I feel like that's, it's a tougher thing to teach on screen for a quick thing like this. Um, sometimes we'll use little pillows of like a chicken wire cage. Okay. So you create almost like an egg. There's a well-known florist that she's created some in plastic that she sells to some of the floral suppliers. Mm -hmm. So you just, it helps, especially when you're ready to tie that off right. and you're still so using the like stem. It doesn't pop them because it's got a nice mechanic on the inside like that. Um, but for to answer your question, then yeah, there is a big trend in looser floral because you've seen them and they're also the trend to be really large. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, large and wild and they're beautiful. Um, but you know, you really have to get the mechanics secured a little bit more. So this is more of just like an everyday florist bouquet. Um, so and you know to when I, this is at the point where I kind of start to be conscious about each direction. Yeah. And I'll spin just similarly to the way we did, and you'll just feel where they need a fill in. Mm -hmm. So I'll, you know, I'll slide those guys over all the top of the stems, just like that. Mm -hmm. Again, spinning towards me with this hand, slide it in. Crossing over all those stems. Now, is there the same shortage in Bruno, or is that you yeah. have a different place? It's there's lemon leaf was really hard to find for a couple of months back in summer. Okay. Shoot, Italian Ruscus, there was a shortage on that for a while, and I don't, 
again, I, I feel like it's a combination of all kinds of things, but um, a lot of it is weather weather related. Um, so, you know, this fun, that, that doesn't look like a, it's, it's, it's kind of muted on screen, but this is more of like a hot peak in yeah. reality. But I still think that's kind of fun to throw in. No, and again, they don't have to be all the same height. So um, you can adjust the heights. But yeah, keeping in mind that, you know, you still have sort of a dome or, you know, conical shape to it is the next look. Um, so, you know, I just, at this point, I just sort of keep spinning and adding where I feel like another color or texture would work. Here, we'll put a couple of these rows in. And, you know, if there, there's that, sort of space right there. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got that loose grip with your hand here, here and you twist and slide on in, sometimes at this point, you, you know, you kind of have to feel around a little bit there. I found a spot and I can slide her right in. And you can cluster certain varieties together too that add some visual interest. Like you could put all your roses in a cluster. Um, because your eye sort of appreciates that you just like a slightly different angle, you know, um, height. So you can sort of have that cluster of rows there, which adds a nice piece of visual interest. Um, you can tuck them here. And like I said, twisting really helps because it does get a little, um, tight as you keep adding. Another trick, if I get a bouquet for a high dollar amount, like say over $200, I can't hold all of that in my hands, but they want they want it as a bouquet, they don't want it as a, um, an arrangement. Mm -hmm. I'll use a bucket. So okay. I'll build it almost like I would a tall arrangement in a bucket, put all your greens in first like that, and then just add your flowers and you can lift it all up and tie it all off. Um, this is a good, this is stunning. Beautiful. So it's fun color combination. And you know, when you get to this point, you wanna put in your fillers. They're usually smaller stems, so they're easy to get in. If you're using any filler, you don't need to use filler. Um, so let's put in a little touch of that blue because I mentioned it, and I think it does, it will add a fun little pop in there too. Even staying, even though you wouldn't think blue for fall, but it's just, we're leaning into fall, right? Mm -hmm. Still summer, <laughs> actually. So there you go with the flowers. And then that's when I, I like to maybe add some silly things around the base. Yeah, on the outside. Yep, along the outside so that once you put it in your in your vase, you, yeah, there you go. Loose and still silly there, some soft nibbles. So that just finishes it, you know, and it covers the lip of the vase if you're putting it in the vase after. I wish you were right now, so I'm like smiling so fondly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I didn't put any of the dusty Miller. But I, don't know, I don't think we need it. I don't think we need it. And that's okay too, you know, you're, you reserve the right to change your mind as you're building. So, stunning. that's what we've got for, uh, like, as a, I call that florist mix. Okay, it's what we would make for you if you came into the store and said, I want a bouquet for as a gift or just for the house. Can you move it a little bit closer? Yep. How do I get this up? Because the camera is right there. Beautiful. There you go. So what I thought, do, how are we on time? Because we can take this apart and have you. Okay. All right. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna do the same kind of thing that we did because I think it. So um, sad. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of the box a little bit with color. Um, I wouldn't think it paints with the like brown and right? red, but it, it works because they're in that family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're 
pinks and reds and browns are all sort of in that same side of the color wheel anyway. Over here. Here's the messy part of trying to forgive us for a second. You can grab. No, it kind of forms into its own little structure there. It does. I'm going to pull those lint, those, the green leaves out. Yeah. That might be. That's what you're going to start with anyway. You ever had a situation where you have like one left of the flower that you needed and then something happened? <laughs> I mean, that happens all the time. But on the other side of that, I get annoyed at the, you know, I always say to the girls in the flower shop, you know what, like if there's only one flower left in the bucket, even if it puts another couple extra dollars in the, in the return, it's okay, please just put it in because what are we going to do with like one? <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> so, one, one thing you Yeah. Oh, I'm hearing the song in my head. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. All right. So, here we go. All right. So You've I got have... your little bundle of bundle of green. Yep. So you can just loosely start placing them almost like in a fanned out manner. Is that yeah. too far apart? Nope. That's good. Okay. And then start sticking some sort of in the middle ones that are a little more upright. So I want to like make a hole in my hand kind of. Right? Yeah. And you can squeeze this one and get that slid down a little. Yep. And don't stress too much about this. It's just, okay, it's just, just like just a green. Yeah. <laughs> it's a super little quick gathering of, of green. It gives you a little bit of structure. Like you can just toss those on that side too. Okay. All right. So there you go. All right. All right. Now you can start with your triangle with long laterals, you know? Okay. You know, let's put it in there and twist. Perfect. Can you make yourself a little triangle? Okay, for it to be here. Yeah. Or yeah. even like in there. And when you're doing that, try to get it to go in angle. at an angle. Yeah. Uh oh. I, I didn't angle this one, which is why it's so well, it's over it. like this. You're good. Okay. And adjust. And then like this one you can put in right there. Straight straight in like that. So yeah, I guess I should have mentioned that too. When you're putting them in, so don't go up in, you want to go sort of sideways, you know, at an angle like that. Degree, yeah, you're right, and twist. Yeah, that so that gives you so then your spacing. Yep. It's okay. <laughs> I did that one wrong. Um, hang on. Put that in a little more. Inside that one, and over there. There you go. A little further back. Yep. Twist. Yep. Got to remember the twist. And this is, yes, this is tougher work than <laughs> so <laughs> um, why don't we put in three of your delphi things? It doesn't have to be the same order that I did it either. So, okay. so in the middle or on the sure, outside? Sure, you can put one in the middle and make a line like we did before. Yep. And then you can maybe get this guy coming in over here. And it can, if you're putting it on the outside, just make sure that the stem is going over all the others. On the outside. Yep. And and yeah, over and yep, exactly. Yep. Is that too close? No, that's fine. That works. And that guy can be kind of pointing the other direction. Yep, in a line. And it'll really start to fill in once you get your cabbage in there. Perfect. Twisty. That's okay. That's okay. Leave it for so this. There's you can still roll another piece of green there. This looks strong. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I wasn't twisting. I was, so for this, yeah, and if it's from right. your viewpoint, you know, I had put one kind of higher in the back. So you can just actually tuck that right behind outside of the stem. Yep, sure. That's fine. That's a little top ground. I'm sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Beautiful flower. You killed me. But there we go. It happens. This is why you have to twist the flower stem, <laughs> not shove the flower stem, ladies and gentlemen. And then, yeah, and like yes. I said, these thicker stems, it's good to get them in at the beginning point because they are thicker. So I would see if you can loosen your grip a little bit with that hand and pull 
slide that one in like that. No. Loosening your grip is hard. It is. That's it the feels hard. Feels like all the flowers, flowers are going to fall out of but the. There you go. Perfect. And yeah, yeah, like slightly lower, like that is a great. Yes. So now, yeah, That's you're so doing good. great. And here you've got a large head. You know, the mums are fun, so you can place those wherever you sort of. This is then where it kind of gets a little organic here. I would, you know, you can slide into the greens. Yeah. 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 Perfect. You, you know, just feel around for. Right. And you can twist the bouquet. You know, so you can do the opposite. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. And then maybe this guy on the opposite side. We're in over there. Mm -hmm. All right. Twisting is really key, we're finding here. Twisting is key. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, you kill all the flowers. So but is this be higher or lower? I would put that lower. Yep. And you can adjust as you go. Yeah, that, that's normal for them to slip down, but pull them up as we go. And they'll get situated. So yeah, I maybe cut that one. Perfect. You can here you can start. Yeah, just tuck it down further as well. Yeah. You can lay across now, you know, as you turn similarly to the way we did the bridal bouquet, and then turn it towards you in that um, counterclockwise way that you were doing. Yep. Put that one around and then keep turning it more. Like that one, and over there where there's that empty space, yeah, right, sort of under the the mm -hmm. Yeah, That's doing great. good. Do you want to try a little cluster of roses? Surely, let's try. There's a good spot right here. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I put them all in at the oh, same no, time? Oh no, sorry, now? I'm handing them to you. No, that's okay. I mean, probably know what to do. Right, right, right. But how do I make room in the stems? You just this is where you kind of it gets it gets tougher. You just gotta kind of feel for an opening, and as you twist, gently twist in. <laughs> You're doing good. Gently twist. And you can loosen your grip a little there bit. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Right. And these, you know what? To make it a little easier, yes, you can put them at a couple varying heights and just slide them right oh, next. There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then. Yeah, it's looking great. You can toss in, and this is now too where you, you know, just add on the bottoms like that, the way we were doing with the, the white roses. So that's fine. Yep, keep twisting it to you. Just tuck that down in a little bit. There's an empty space there, right there. Yep, and you're perfect with your crossing of your stem. And then you can toss that guy here. Are you open a couple dahlia? Yes, absolutely. All right, all right. So wherever you think, I mean, one, that's a good spot. That's a good spot. And you don't have to really twist it in. You can sort of let it cross. Perfect. Yep, that's mm -hmm. how you have it. Yep. And maybe done just on the opposite mm -hmm. side. Here? Somewhere where, yeah, anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then you can put in a little filler wherever you sort of feel like, Boom. you know. Yeah, you got a big green, a big green, a big green space. <laughs> here. Uh, there's a nice key. Yep. Yeah. Now where you want to make outside. sure your stem goes that yeah. way. Yep. Does it smell? Like it does. And, yeah. Any other? Now should it go up or no down? Yeah, it's like lower to the book. Yeah, okay. where it feels good to you. Looks good. Mm -hmm. And then you can now, I think you can sort of line the bottom part with a little bit of droopy, drippy greenery. And you're looking good. Yeah. Oh, this smells so good. This one? That's that eucalyptus. So nice? Yeah, the eucalyptus always smells so nice. And you can tuck that really low because. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then maybe just a nice piece of that view because I'll drip down. And look at you guys, she's awesome. 
Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. It really is beautiful. So it's it's practice and trial and error, but very those challenging. Are the, yeah, very challenging. It's a little harder, obviously, than you know the single variety and all the stems going the same direction, but. That twisting method really works well. And does it matter that the two kales are nope. right next to I each like other? I like that. I like how they're slightly different heights. So then you've got a good triangle with your I'm mom do a and a good up. triangle with your leucodendron. Yep. Looks great. <laughs> Looks great. And then however you were going to use this, you know, if you were going to give it to someone, you could just tie it off and mm -hmm. hand it to them with some pretty streamers if you wanted. Or you could seriously just chop it to the size of the base that you have at home and slip it right in. So that's a little bit of bouquet making. <laughs> that's great. It's harder than it looks. That's just awesome. You, you definitely make awesome. it look very seamless yes, and you easy. Do. You do it. I'm like, oh, look at it. You did great. It looks <laughs> really beautiful. All right, you guys. All right. Did we want to thank see you if so any much? Yes. Does or... anyone have any questions? Please feel free to put them in the Q and A or the chat. We will answer them for you. Someone said thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and like with anything, you know, it's you just gotta keep doing it. You yeah. know, so. You've got the basic mechanics down and you can just play and you can, and that's, it's also too how I'll teach newer designers, I'll say, because we also want to get that done in a quick amount of time. Right. If someone's waiting at the counter, they want something made and that's a skill that is, you know, obviously it's just done with practice. So I'll tell them, put a, put, put a bouquet together. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Take it apart like we just did and do it again. It's just, just like with anything that you get good at, it's just practice. Mm -hmm. So. That's the deal. All right. I have a quick question. Do you have, like, I've seen a lot of new flower, like, breeds come into play. Is there anything that's trending or you should be on the lookout that you think is <laughs> amazing? Talking, the white is big right now, again. Mm -hmm. So wedding, all that all white mm -hmm. and cream and soft green look is, that's pretty popular right now. Um, I think still we're in that trend of texture and movement. So it's not that often. I mean, more often the, those pop aid style, the brides will say, well, we can do all of those. So maybe for the bridesmaids kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the bride will want something more wild. So I do think there's still that trend for really um, lots of texture. Greenery is still really big. Um, and those silver tones, like this Dusty Miller and the Eucalyptus, which has like a silvery green tone to it. Mm -hmm. If you think about neutrals, even in design work in interiors, the best things to work around are whites, grays, and browns, really, mm -hmm. black too, so that you can add whatever color combination mm -hmm. or pops of color to those. So I think that there's still a big trend in having that silver add a little bit of neutral interest to whatever um, mm -hmm. floral color combination you're doing. But those are the main ones. Um, in terms of varieties of flowers, I don't know, that comes and goes. It's, you know, peonies are everyone's favorite in the mm -hmm. spring. Everyone's favorite in the spring. Um, ranunculus, so things that have that like, super high petal count. Right. You know, because I think that feels really lush and it's yummy, like those flowers, so those are, those are some things I think people have been out for lately. And I don't know if you can answer this. Someone wants to know how much a bouquet like this or this would cost in the shop. So, you know, something like this size wise, and it depends because everything's priced per stem. So we could say, you know, like stock here, it runs like, and every the flower prices have gone up too. I mean, that's unfortunate during this whole thing. Which in the last five years I've been able to sell these at three fifty a stem. These are now at four stem. Um, dahlias are always more, you know. So size wise, like a typical size, if you walked into a florist, you could get something if we're using the right things. Because hydrangea, we can use hydrangea, and that really fills in these, you know. So around fifty to sixty or so. But I'd say with these types of flowers we've got going on, this is going to be more up to like the eighty five one hundred range. <laughs> And a typical bridal bouquet, like this size, um, 
you know, two, you're also, there's other, you know, there's ribbon involved and pins and, you know, other mechanics, like if we were to do a bridal bouquet and more along this side, size, but a typical bridesmaid bouquet is like starting at that $75 range, 75 to 100. And typically a bridal bouquet, I would say, is in that 250 range, mm -hmm. you know, and it can be. Again, if she wanted all Phalaenopsis orchids, you're talking about a five hundred dollar bouquet. Right. Um, so it really depends on the flower that we're we're using. But if you tell the, your florist when you walk in, say, I want something full and, and big, but I only want to spend, tell them you want to spend fifty, sixty dollars, and we'll figure out the right flowers to put in so that you have some fullness. If they just want a, you know, they're obsessed with peonies, you know, five peonies will be more than fifty dollars because they can average on that twelve to fourteen dollars a stem. So so it really depends, but size wise you could start a nice full bouquet at that fifty five sixty range. So the key is to be flexible. Right? The key is to be flexible or just to say what you're really looking for, you know, or, or say are there ways that I can make something look fuller, but it doesn't have a ton of flowers. And for instance, like hydrangea would be one of those for the large headed flowers, mm -hmm. you know, like the kale or those cremones are- I will have nice a bouquet of kale, please. <laughs> What'd you say? A, a bouquet, bouquet of, of kale, kale, please. A bouquet of kale, why not? Then you can eat it later. <laughs> <laughs> are there any others? That is okay. it. Okay. Thank All you right. so much. Thank this is wonderful. Guys. Thank you. Thank so you. nice to meet you both too. It's great to be here at the library. Thank you. Go out and make some bouquets. Yes, practice, practice, <laughs> practice. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.